Poet Technologies CEO Suresh Venkatesan kicks off a hectic June right here, discussing the significant happenings with the company. I'm Adrian Bridge Bassey, a content creator as well as an investor in Poet, and Dr. Venkatesan is with me to talk about some developments. Suresh, thanks as always for taking the time. Thanks, Adrian, and uh, happy to be here with you. So, you know, good news this week. Uh, the company announced the appointment of, of Arista Network's Teresa Enda to the board of directors. What does that appointment mean for the company and, uh, you know, for validation of the optical interposer? You know, it's, it's always great to have, um, you know, people of stature uh, from the industry come and join the company's board. Uh, we've been recruiting, you know, new board members to, you know, augment our existing, you know, board. And we expect to be in front of the shareholders in October asking for permission to expand the board and, of course, you know, nominate Teresa to the board. Um, it's It's been great. Uh, you know, she brings, um, you know, a very um, different perspective to our board, uh, primarily supply chain oriented. Uh, she's got a terrific background um, exposure of all the all the suppliers. She knows what is out there in this industry and what Poet has to bring. Um, and you know, of course, a, a, an immense network. I mean, for a small company like ourselves, we rely on the, on the board to you know not just do you know what what normal boards do in terms of you know um, governance and 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 audit and so on, but also to use their network. Right and and promote the company, and and create the network that allows us to get the exposure that we're starting to get this year. Um, you know, a lot more than we did any of you know the previous years I've been at Poet, especially at the scale and at the the types of companies that we want to get exposure to. So we're very happy to have Teresa on board. Uh, she'll be joining us as an advisor um, till such time as she's made permanent. Um, and and we look forward to her engagement on the board as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's such a, a great addition. I'm I'm sure everyone in the industry is t starting to take notice. And other things that I think they'll be taking notice of this this month is that you're going to be on the road again uh, and starting in Hawaii uh, to pre present the VLSI paper. Uh, now we can't get into details because it's a white paper, and 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 I, I know you want to make the presentation um, there at that event. But maybe you can say why you think the topic of hybrid integration, which is the focus of the paper, will get uh, some attention uh, from the attendees. Yeah, you know we were happy to get a, a a good slot at the talk. I'm I'm heading up the session on hybrid integration with our technology. So, um, you know, uh, VLSI has always been, you know, one of the top two conferences for CMOS technologists uh, over the years. And so you, you have to submit your paper. The paper is reviewed by your peers, um, you know, for content, originality, et cetera, and impact. And, and we were happy to, you know, be accepted. Uh, the paper was highly rated. Um, yes, and I'll be given a talk on hybrid integration, particularly hybrid integration utilizing, you know, Poets Interposer. Photonics has not been a big, you know, a theme in these conferences, but lately with, you know, Moore's Law slowing down, um, you know, really the name of the game is augmenting silicon technology with new capability. And new capability in this context is hybrid integration. And hybrid integration can mean, you know, photonics, it could be power, it could be RF. In, in our case, you know, we're talking hybrid integration of photonics as a means to augment the capability of silicon technology and take it to the next generation in terms of you know power performance and cost and and that's what uh poets optical interposer is about so we're happy to have gotten a good billing there and and uh and looking forward to the meeting right and and then shortly after that you're going to be at another meeting i think uh, looking uh bringing even more validation after after vlsi you'll you'll be at uh the PIC International in Brussels, uh, and again, 2022, a big year for Poet. Why is it important for Poet to have a presence there you know, uh, this I, year? Yeah, I think uh, we, we've been a little bit, you know, quiet uh, with our technology because, you know, I, I guess I personally haven't believed in making a big deal about it till we kind of dot our I's, cross our T's and make sure that things are really wetted out. And, and now that we're starting to sample customers uh, with really beta level, full specification meeting, you know, products, 
Um, you know, we feel it's important now to get the word out. And uh, while we've done the validation at 100, 200, and 400 gig on the receive side, um, you know, we are still validating the 100 gig solution on the transmit, which is now complete. And we're making some breakthroughs on the 200 gig. Um, and, and we expect to be able to sample customers over the course of this month. So with, with samples going out to customers, you know, it's important to go ahead and talk about what it is that you're doing in a forum of your peers. And, and that's what the PIC conference is about. You know, PIC is Photonics Integrated Circuits. We've kind of had an on and off presence at the PIC conference, but this is really our big, um, you know, complete platform uh, demonstration in terms of the paper and, and what it is that Poet's doing. And, and I'm basically in the same session as, as some of the you know, pioneers in the field, including Intel and others. So um, it should be a good conference. I think what Poet is gonna bring to the, to the, to the table is a different way of doing the integration uh, using our optical interposer. And um, you know, there's, uh, there are many ways to get to the end goal. And we think that we have uh, an inherently simple way to get there. Um, and, um, and we've demonstrated it with results that have been achieved, um, you know, in, in a much, much shorter time scale and with far fewer resources than some of these other companies had to have put into it. Mm -hmm. So uh, understandable why uh, uh, these conferences and your and your peers are going to be excited to to hear about you. And then, you know, after Brussels, you're on a plane back to Singapore and you'll be uh, there, I, I think, for the opening of the Shine Center at the end of the month. How's, how's yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's another, um, you know, big opening for us. Uh, I think we've talked about Shine before. Um, you know, it's a hybrid integration center. Um, it's it's inaugurating, you know, at the end of June. Um, you know, I'll be heading up the presentations there as well. Uh, but then there are several companies uh, that are going to be talking about what they would look forward to seeing from, from Shine. Poet, of course, brings the photonics bent to it, um, uh, along with AMF, which is Advanced Micro Foundries, that is also based in Singapore. Uh, on the material side, we've got Soytech. On the equipment side, Applied Materials. So I think it becomes a really good uh, center for innovation, uh, which is really important for Poet. I mean, what we've done is great, but, you know, um, you know, differentiation doesn't last unless you keep innovating um, and we have to keep innovating and, and, and centers such as these, um, you know, provide us the means to continue to innovate uh, at the rate at which we need to, in order to stay ahead of the curve um, and, and continue to attack next generation solutions. Mm -hmm. and, and some of that innovation that happens in Singapore uh, progresses on to super photonics and the joint venture in Jaman, uh, which I think is up to, you correct me if I'm wrong, up to around 35 employees now. You know, what kind of things are they working on? How, how's that uh, joint venture uh, operating? Yeah, we've uh, practically transferred 100 gigs completely to them. So, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're going through their qualification and uh, we've got a couple of customers now actively designing modules with the engines. Um, so, you know, the betas are, have gone out. I mean, you know, I think that part of our schedule is, is, is in good step. Poet, um, you know, is, um, is working on kind of the newer technologies. So 200 gig, 400 gig transmit. Um, the 400 gig receive has also been transferred to Superphotonics. So that one is also, you know, largely completed. Beta samples have been started to ship out on 400 gig. And, you know, we're excited because I think by September of this year, the CIOE, we expect to also demonstrate a 1.6 terabit um, receive wow. engine, uh, which is going to be a very, very big um, eye-opening kind of a, a, a statement because, you know, not too many people can put a single chip QSFP, OSFP compatible, you know, 1.6 terabit uh, engine. And, and it's really our intent to use it as a way to demonstrate the integration capabilities of our platform and, and what we expect to do about it. So while Super Photonics is kind of taking these engines that we've transferred to them and then getting them, you know, uh, ready for production on the schedules that we have previously communicated, you know, Poets, of course, working on new products. We've... Um, you know, actually launched in Silterra, um, you know, two new products that happen to be our first fully integrated electronics and photonics uh, combined on the interposer 
as a single chip solution. And uh, we're doing one for the 400 gig receive with an integrated transit beat amplifier and another for a 200 gig transmit with an integrated driver. So these now become kind of, you know, the, the first of their kind as in, in the Aeroposer in the context of having co-integrated photonics and electronics, which is really the harbinger for, or the next, the, the building blocks or the steps towards, you know, ultimately getting to these integrated 800 gig 1.6 terabit engines, which is really where we feel Poet is going to bring an immense amount of differentiation. Um, so I think what we're doing is systematically transferring things that are completed to super photonics and focusing on kind of the new development activities that need to be done uh, to keep our roadmap going. Yeah, and, and I'll just uh, go back to the 1.6 uh, the terabytes. So that's uh, We've gone from 800 over almost leapfrogged over 800 in, in the sense right and and to be able to present yeah i mean this. we don't think the industry is quite ready today for a 16 lane 1.6 terabit engine but you know i think we we felt it was important to to demonstrate it because um it just shows that you know it's being a platform um we have the ability to integrate and and um and and the form factors that we're able to achieve are quite uh, eye popping from that perspective. So I think it's a it's a good demonstration, uh, but it really the expectation is that it would open more eyes and then get more, um, you know, interest in our eight hundred gig products. Yeah, is anyone else at one point six? Uh, you know, I haven't seen one. <laughs> you know, yeah, definitely that's... not in an integrated form factor on the receive side. Definitely not something I've seen with silicon photonics or any other uh, implementation of the technology. Well, congratulations on that for sure. Um, so, you know, last question, uh, you've given us some cu customer updates. Anything else to share? You know, you mentioned the betas, you mentioned some um, things going into, um, uh, into super, super photonics. Any, anything else? No, I think, you know, it's it, it continues to be a busy year. It continues to be a busy summer. I think uh, June is, you know, I'm spending more of my time, you know, kind of externally facing, um, you know, after spending a lot of time internally with the teams on on just, you know, bringing the technology to to, to the market and so on. So I think uh, I would expect June, July and August to, to really be, you know, more of a an external, you know, a view of, uh, you know, Poet uh, talking to, you know, new customers, talking at conferences, networking, making sure that, you know, people understand what it is that we're doing on a larger scale, because ultimately, you know, those open eyes and bring new opportunities to the company. Yeah, well, uh, you've certainly opened a lot of eyes um, with uh, the, the innovations that you've made this year and uh, continue to. So thanks you, uh, Suresh. Continue good luck, safe travels, and uh, we'll be talking again soon. Thank you. Thank you.